guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Guitar Talk with Todd here at Todd BB Music. Thanks for checking in. As always, please like, subscribe, comment, share, all the good stuff. We appreciate it. Uh, we got a really special guitar review today. This is the Dickie Betts Gibson SG from one brother to another edition that the Gibson Custom Shop put out in uh they put these out in about 2011. I believe some of them went into 2012, that whole area right there that year from 2011 to 2012. I'm a big Allman Brothers fan, Dickie Betts and Dwayne Allman, huge, huge influence on all of us guitar players. I always like to say um, those guys are like one of the ones that you put in that league of even if you say to someone, do you listen to them? Are you influenced by them? No, not really. They are, and they don't really realize that they're getting that influence in a roundabout way from other guitar players. Obviously, Dickie and Dwayne pioneered a lot of stuff with the twin guitar stuff, and that went off into even heavy metal bands and whatever have you that, that had twin guitars. They are all influenced by Dwayne and Dickie, whether they <laughs> realize it or not, so... Huge, huge honor for me. I've been around uh, Dicky multiple times over the years. He's always been super cool to me, and, and it's been a real honor to spend time with him and, and to be checking out one of these guitars today. He did 250 of these in the vintage original spec, VOS finishes, which is what this is. And then there was a real special limited run of about 75 uh, ones that were aged by the custom shop and they were signed and numbered on the back of the headstock by Dickie too. I believe we have one of those coming in uh, pretty soon so I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> A private uh, collector is, is uh, bringing one in here that we're going to check out but this is even just as cool. Uh, this is one of the 250 run that they did which were in just the VOS. Uh, if you're not familiar with the VOS Vintage Original Spec uh, finish, it's supposed to look like a well-cared-for vintage guitar. So Dickie's original was a 1961, and this is made to look like it, very you know well taken care of. You know, it's got the patina on there, and it's got the worn look, but nothing is distressed or you know worn off. I know on the custom shop ones that they did of the '75 that Dickie signed, it's it, it's meant to look exactly like his. The finish is worn off the back of the neck and everything, and of course we'll check that out big time when it does come in. But um, this one doesn't have any of that. It's just very old looking, but not quite worn out. A uh, private collector brought this in today, and a private collector is bringing in one of the 75 that were signed, so we're looking forward to checking those out too. You did a lot of cool things on this. First of all, let's kind of talk about that. The From one brother to another, SG these are called. The story is that when uh, Dickie was playing with Dwayne Allman in the Allman Brothers Band, Dwayne, I guess, had one guitar at the time, and he had to keep stopping to retune <laughs> for when he would play slide. And the story goes that Dickie gave him this guitar, not this very guitar, I wish, but <laughs> a replica of this. He gave him his 61 SG, and so that's what this is modeled after. Like I said, they put 250 of these out and 75 that were signed as well. I believe the original guitar, I know Graham Nash owned it for a while. And then um, I'm not sure where it's at. I think it was in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for a while. I'm not, I, I believe a private owner might own it. Now, <laughs> how cool would that be if we get it in to check it out? But probably not going to happen, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. But I do think we're going to get one of the 75 signed ones from the custom shop. But today we're checking out this one. This has some cool things on it that was just like the one that Dickie had. I'm going to get some close-ups in the case in a while, like we always do. But you have the nylon saddles on the ABR1 2 pneumatic bridge here. Very common thing in the late 60s. They would do that. It kind of tends to help with binding and stuff if you're having tuning problems. So a lot of guys tried out the nylon saddles. Stop bar, of course. This has the custom buckers from the custom shop, the, the Al Nico 3s. These are actually a very low output pickup, which was very common at that time. 
and they're very similar to you know original PAFs, which is kind of what Diggy had in in his. Obviously, we've got the trapezoid mother of pearl inlays, and then Gibson, of course, headstock logo up there on the top uh very cool of course i'm gonna play this and, and check it out like we always do but um a lot of things you would kind of expect from this from a solid mahogany sg uh they did a beautiful job with these as the gibson custom shop always does it's got the shaler style tuners up here machine heads that were obviously a replacement on the back, I'm gonna get some shots of that later too. You can see the uh, holes where it was like um, on Dickies, like when they replaced the original tuners and put these on. Also very common whenever you see those replaced like that. I know on the original one, because it was a 1961, they would have had the vibrato on here that came on a lot of the 61 SGs. And I've on the 75, the Diggy sign, I know you could see they replicated the holes and stuff where that would have been the vibrato piece. This, you know, doesn't have that. But again, it's got a very worn look to it. I love the VOS stuff. I just think it's great. It has a real, um, you know, if you, if you don't really want all the nicks and scratches and all that, which the 75 do because they were aged and they replicate exactly what Dickies looks like now. But if you don't want that, the VOS finish is a good way to go because they do like the aged hardware and stuff, but you don't really have any nicks or anything in this if you could see it in the light. I mean, it's a solid finish. There's not one nick on here. It's in beautiful shape. I know Derek Trucks plays one of these and uh, he's got like the prototype or whatever and it's one of his main guitars. I hear him talk about it all the time. Gibson just did a beautiful job with these. I know I saw Dickey play one around 2013 or so. He went out with his band Great Southern and he had um, you know one of these that obviously he got from Gibson when they did the run. So they just did a great job with it. Uh, cleans up very well. And then of course it's got that if we go full on here. I mean you can do you know ACDC on this thing in classic Angus you know style. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's an SG uh, no doubt about it, but um, let's uh, check it out here and um, see what this thing looks like in the case. Let's check it out. Okay, so here is the case for the Dickie Betts Gibson Custom from one brother to another Gibson SG. Uh, very cool. They put Dickie's signature on there, uh, or obviously a facsimile, <laughs> unless he had a giant gold sharpie and he was signing the case, which would be cool, but he did not. But still very cool. It's a facsimile there of his signature. Uh, the handle on this one's a little worn and been around the block. I know they did not come like that. That's specifically on this one. I don't really know exactly what happened with the handle, but anyways... There's the coolest sound right there on planet Earth, or one of them anyway. <laughs> Latches opening on a guitar case, and then let's check her out. Okay, so there she is in the case. Let's get some close-ups here. So like I said, we got an all-mahogany body, a lot of different things going on here. There's those custom buckers, Alnico 3s. The Gibson put in those low output pickups that just sound incredible. Um, you know, we'll, when we give it a test run here, you'll hear that. At the stop bar going on here. I know I've read a couple of different things about this on Dickies. You can find it online too. They said when they got his from, uh, I believe, Graham Nash owned it at that time. The stop bar was actually reinstalled by someone and it was like uneven, even a little bit. And Gibson you know, thankfully knows better than to do some stuff that's wrong <laughs> when they're going to go. So they did not put it on wrong. They said they did put that on right because they didn't want to put a stop bar on at a bad angle or some whoever did that work on Dickies years and years and years ago, probably back in the 60s. And then if you can get here, he's got a close-up of those nylon saddles on here on the ABR1 2 pneumatic bridge. That was a very common thing, especially in the 60s. 
uh, again, to kind of help with tuning and whatnot. You see that on a lot of, uh, especially SGs at that time. Uh, this is even a little bit different than you'll see on a standard SG. Again, the toggle switch and the tip to kind of replicate what Dickies was like. Uh, you could see the rhythm is a little bit worn off there as well as the treble. They do that with the VOS finishes. Got the two volume, two tone controls here. Typical SG fashion with the output jack. Let's get another shot of that just from up above. Rosewood fingerboard with the Mother of Pearl trapezoid inlays here. And then we're coming up to the headstock here with the Gibson logo on it. Okay, so on the back here, here is those Shaler tuning machines. And you can kind of see there, they even put the impressions in of where the old tuners would have been. You can sort of see not only the hole, but that impression above it of the old tuners. So that's just great work from the Gibson Custom Shop. But uh, Dickie's original one had the shalers put, you know, on it in replace of to replace the old tuners, and so Gibson Custom made that look exactly like it does on Dickies in true VOS style. Uh, even the screw there has that. You can see the rust on it and it's a straight you know straight head screw just like on Dickies so the uh, VOS does that a lot too with aging the hardware but again you can see there's no nicks or anything on this the finish is just old looking but well taken care of like a 1961 that maybe was never really played at all or hardly at all All right, here is the Certificate of Authenticity that came with all of these from Gibson Custom. Um, again, these are just really, really cool. It's got Dickie's picture on there as well as Dwayne, and they issued these with all of the 250 of these that were done in the vintage original spec finish, and I know for sure the 75 that are aged and signed had these as well. So there is a close-up look there of the COA that came with these but this is just a great beautiful beautiful piece and like I said it's an honor to check this out as Dickie's a huge hero of mine and this is just a beautiful tribute to him and that awesome guitar that he gave to brother Dwayne Allman all right so that's what she looks like in the case let's uh Give her a spin here and take her for a test drive. I'm going to do like I usually do some clean stuff. Uh, slide, which of course on a replica of a guitar Dwayne Allman played. It almost seems sacrilegious to 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 do it and to not do it. <laughs> I kind of have to do it to pay tribute to Dwayne. But forgive me, Dwayne. I'm uh, always will be a student of yours. And I will never be anywhere in the league that you are. But I'm going to pay tribute to you the best I can that's for sure and then I'm also going to do um to honor Dickie I'm going to do his classic uh, instrumental tune that he did with the Allman Brothers band in memory of Elizabeth Reed I have a track here that I'm going to play along with and do that uh, the best I can too so hope you guys enjoy it check it out
Okay, guys, so there she is, the 1961 reissue of the Dickie Betts from one brother to another Gibson SG that Gibson did in the custom shop. Beautiful guitars. You can find these. They're out there floating around. Um, if you find one of the 75, the Dickie sign, and that are aged, those are really, really special. Uh, definitely grab one and play it if you can. Obviously, if you can get one buy one and add to your collection life is always better with more guitars so <laughs> go ahead but um if you have any questions uh please ask comment you guys let me know what you guys think of these let me know what you think of the almond brothers band i'm a huge fan so um it's an honor for me to be doing this today but uh thanks for checking in today you guys be safe and love your dogs and we'll see you again take care